welcome back to Uncovering the Mysteries of Ancient Egypt, here on Doodling with Purpose, your at-home class for learning ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. Last week, we talked about prepositions, words that prepose nouns. And this combination in particular has to do with the energy and the, the spirit and, well, it's kind of like the force of ancient, well, actually, it's kind of like duct tape, you know? It's got a light side, it's got a dark side, and it binds the whole universe together. Oh, yeah, I guess that actually kind of is like the force. Well, either way, for the ancient Egyptians, it was called ka. And this particular phrase, naka the, means for the ka of. The n water sign, meaning both for and of, and you can figure out what the particular meaning is based on context. It wouldn't make sense to say of the ka of, or for the ka for. So let's move on to another very important phrase, actually two very important phrases that you're going to see in a lot of different inscriptions and stella because they come up in funeral sayings when we're talking about the blessed dead of ancient Egypt, Egyptians. Excuse me. So what we're looking at here are the words chutnab nefer wabat and Im. So these words, you'll see them a lot in conjunction with each other. They translate to everything good and pure on which a god lives or on which a god may live. So let's break apart both of these. So the first one starts off with the word chut, which we've talked about the word chut before. It is the word for thing. We have the placenta, the loaf, and then the determinative for non-representative objects. So the uh, sort of an oval with a W there, it's a papyrus scroll. And this determinative is used for things that could be anything, like things. <laughs> and then nub uh, has two different meanings. So this is the basket without a handle. So nub can either mean every and all, or it could mean lord. We've talked about this before, but just as review, and it's definitely always good to you know go over things a few times, especially with a language like this. How do you know if it means every all or lord? Well, it's all about placement. If the word nub comes at the beginning of a word, it means lord. So in this case, this says lord of Abydos, Abydos being a town in ancient Egypt. So in order to translate this and to know, well, first off, you know it's Lord because, again, it comes first in the word or in the sentence. And we can also tell that that is a place because the determinative for a place is at the end, the circle with an X through it. You've probably seen this for railroad crossings. This is actually where it comes from. It's amazing how things trickle down from ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs. So abudu, or putting some vowel sounds in there, abidos, is... A town, so Lord of Abydos. All right, so we got that down. So then with Chutnub, where Nub comes at the end of the word, this is going to mean every or all. So it would literally translate to thing every or thing all. But of course, in English, we're going to reverse that and turn it into everything or all things. But everything in this case sounds a little bit more correct, and it's okay to use English idioms to understand the language when we're translating. So our whole word here, chutnub, everything, and then we have two glyphs. We have neder and wa'ab. Wa'ab is a foot with a vase spilling water. Pretty easy to draw since you've already done vases, water, and foot. You just put it together. So nefer means good, and wab or wabit, if it's feminine, means pure. You're going to see these words a lot. So putting the whole thing together, it becomes chutnub nefer wabit, which would translate to everything good and pure. All right, our second one, ankh neferim. So this is another very common phrase, and it's best to look at this as a phrase into itself and not try to break it apart. We're going to break it apart, but when you see this, know that that is how it's pronounced. And you're going to see it in combination with chut nefer wab because you'll see at the end they flow as sort of one description. 
So, Ankh Neferim. Well, we may recognize some words again. We've got Ankh, which means life, and Nefer, which we've talked about means God or deity. And that's sometimes a word or letter that is put in the front. You may also recognize this as being the first syllable in Nefertiti, which means great royal wife or godlike wife. So, yes, you'll see uh, definitely syllables that you're going to start to recognize in ancient Egyptian places and people. So, Ankh Neferim. We've got Ankh for life and Nefer for good. And then Im, which is the, um, the shoot plus the owl, is Im, which means on which. So this would translate to life a god on which. But again, that's not very good English, so in order to understand it with our English ears, we're going to sort of just flip the words around, and it's going to become on which a god lives, or on which a god may live. So now putting it all together with both phrases, which again, you will see them connected a lot. And you'll see, when you see one, you'll see or to see the other. And it's a good idea to kind of memorize these phrases because they flow into each other. So, you know, everything good and pure on which a God lives. You'll see that a lot. All right. So we'll continue our lessons next week as we finish up the offering formula. And as always, keep practicing. Like this, subscribe to this. It tells YouTube to share it with more people. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next week for more doodling with purpose.